I'm really honored and um, and just happy to be able to to be here uh, um, with you all. And I I really hope that you know this this session this evening our time together will be um, not only inspiring but also healing in in whatever way that that arises uniquely for for each of us. Um, I, I'm really grateful for this space because, um, you know, as as we learn, as as we uh, as more research comes out about just uh, trauma, we we have information that lets us know that trauma isn't just what happens to us, but it's what's left over, the impact that's that's left within us. And it also is deeply connected to experiencing um, the situation or the experience alone. So the piece of aloneness is directly connected to so much trauma or maybe, maybe not the word aloneness, but this deep sense of being disconnected, not belonging. So spaces like this, I, I, I deeply appreciate because while a lot of healing must take place individually, there is still a need for us to, to be the compassionate witness to the healing and um, transformation of, of other beings as well. So um, hopefully this will, will, will touch some of that um, during our time together today. Um, and, you know, like, like what I have planned is, is um, less about me talking and like giving a Dharma talk, but more so just sharing a, a several practices with you that, that are healing and um, that are nurturing to, to and nourishing um, to me. And just kind of like guiding dialogue and conversation around practice. Okay, um, there will be times that I will talk and let's see what arises, but my hope is that this might be a container that emerges from what we connect with as we, we practice together and we're here together today. Um, so to start off, just wanna do a quick check-in and just hear from, hear from you all, like what brings you here? Like it's, I don't know where y'all are, but where I am, it's sunny, it's warm outside, people outside walking dogs, kids are playing, you know, people throwing frisbees. What, what, why are we here today? And you can unmute. Thank you everyone who uh, put your, space, your voice into the uh, space. We're gonna just shift and we're gonna have more times to chat um, but I want to uh, kind of invite us to just do a grounding practice. Um, and then we're going to have a little conversation and then we're going to do a longer practice. I'm going to in introduce the, the rest practice that I created to you. Um, and then we'll have more conversation and then we'll have some music. So um, yeah, let's do a grounding practice together. Okay. So just inviting you to find a posture that feels comfortable for you. And now I um, invite three sounds of a bell just to communicate that we're beginning. Okay, and I, as I always say at the beginning of my practices, if at any point during the practice you need to just move your body or switch postures or you know shift to something that feels a little more comfortable for your needs, please do so. Okay, so just checking in with the body, just, just kind of inquiring with the body. Is the posture that I'm currently currently find myself in, is that posture comfortable for me? Is it actually okay with my body to be here? Do I need to make any adjustments? And 
And once you kind of sense in with the body, just allowing your attention to, to just relax with the body. So not like a, a tight focus on any particular part of the body, but just enough connection with the body for there to be a recognition that there's a body here. So just greeting the body with attention and curiosity, nothing to find, just sensing if this is okay for you. And just noticing as you, as you sense the body, just how is the body right now? Is there, is there a lot of energy moving throughout the body? Is there more tension? Does the body feel pretty spacious and open? Just not trying to find an answer actually, but just kind of, that's the quality of curiosity to have. Just, oh, what's here? then whatever you connect with, we're just gonna, we're gonna take three deep breaths together. And the invitation is for us to breathe in deeply in our nose. And as we exhale, exhaling slowly out of the mouth as if you're blowing through a straw. And if the rhythm gets off a little bit, you don't have to be exactly with me, but most importantly, as you inhale through the nose, feeling the body, imagining that you're, you're gathering all of the tension in the body. And as you exhale, and you exhale slowly, like blowing through a straw, you imagine that the body, you're inviting the body to relax into the posture even more, okay? Okay, so when you're ready, just breathing in the nose, deeply and exhaling slowly out of the mouth and just inviting the body to relax. Okay, and breathing in the nose deeply. And exhaling slowly out of the mouth. Okay, and one more time, breathing in the nose deeply. and exhaling slowly out of the mouth. Okay, and just allowing the breath to return to its natural rhythm. And just sensing, checking in with the body again. What's here right now? What am I aware of? So am I aware of tingling in the body? Am I aware that the body is more relaxed? Just checking in. Not controlling, not trying to change anything. We're just sensing and feeling.
Okay, and now as you allow your attention to remain anchored, connected with the body, I'm just gonna invite you to reflect on this question. Who can you bring to mind that has been influential through acts of kindness or generosity of love in your development and just your ability to be who you are today? Who comes to mind when you think of a person that you can say, oh, so maybe just starting with a family member. Is there anybody in your family that you can say, oh yeah, it's because of this person's love and generosity and kindness that I know has influenced and helped me to be here today, to be who I am today. So just bring that person to mind, maybe bring their name to mind. And if possible, bringing an image of that person to mind. Don't have to hold it, but just connecting, a way of connecting. And as you feel this connection, just if they were here with you, just offering a word of kindness, just thank you so much for your love and kindness. I may not have told you, but I, I'm truly grateful for you. And just really feel this gratitude in your heart. Let your body feel it. Let your heart feel it. And just invite them. Just say, please, can you sit next to me? I would love for you to sit here with me. Just you imagine that they they are delighted. They feel grateful for your your gratitude, and they they would love to just sit beside you as a compassionate being who's supporting you. And then just rest, maybe feeling the body breathe in and out a few times. And now bringing to mind someone who's a friend. It can be a human being or a non-human being, but. someone, something that you consider to be a friend. And maybe they, they've already passed on or maybe they're still alive. But that you know it's because of their, their friendship, your, their kindness, their support, that you are who you are today, that it's touched you in some way. Even if it's just keeping you company, being able to grieve together, laugh together, have fun together. Is there a friend that comes to mind or that you had? And just let their name come to your mind.
maybe a face, maybe their smile. And as you feel their smile, just offering, just as if they were here, words of kindness. Thank you so much for your friendship, for your love. Even if our friendship was short, while it lasted, I, I really appreciate it. And because of it, I know that I am, I'm better today. I know that it's, it's made an impact on me. So thank you. And just inviting them as you feel the gratitude in your heart and they feel your, the gratitude in their heart for you, just inviting that person, please, if you're willing, I'd love for you to just sit next to me. Please just sit with me. And then with your two beings of care and love next to you, maybe bring into mind one more being. Maybe it's an ancestor, maybe spiritual ancestor or blood through your blood lineage, family lineage. And a spiritual ancestor can be a deity or, or a saint, it can be an angel or a, uh, an archetype or, or maybe just someone that you've read their teachings or their writing and their writings have influenced you, their music. Just see if there's one person that is no longer with us in this form that their love still remains with you or their wisdom still nourishes you, brings a smile to your heart when you think of them. And just feel their smile, feel their their love, feel whatever you connect with that has inspired you. Just feel that. And maybe bring their, their face to mind. And just having a, a loving, offering loving words to them. Even though you aren't here with me in this form, uh, your love, your wisdom, your kindness, your teachings have touched me. And because of that, I am who I am in this moment. And I just wanted you to know that. It's because of you that who I am today is who I am. I'm just offering a smile to them.
and seeing them offer a smile back to you. Just inviting them, please sit, sit with me. There's room for you here. So just feeling the presence of those beings that care for you around you, the family member, your friend, your ancestor or someone who's inspired you. Just feeling the support of their presence. Just maybe bringing one hand to your heart, just touching in, just connecting with the body. Just maybe rubbing the heart. And just thanking yourself for being here. And I'll invite three sounds of the bell. And just feel free to open your eyes slowly or move the body in any way that you need to. Okay, so thank you for your practice. Yeah, so just moving the body for a second. I know since I'm getting older, I'm in my 30s now, I need to move my body more. <laughs> okay. As we come out of this practice and back into the space with one another, just want to just open up, invite us to unmute um, if we feel led, and just just curious who who's here with you? Who would you bring here with you? I always like to say. Um, When we show up to places, it's we show up with not just ourselves, but we bring everyone with us. And you know, as a, a practice of of remembrance, um, you know, this something like this is I think is critical um, as we move into very challenging and disturbing and horrific times to to be able to have that circle of care to have that that circle of love to to feel those those beings who are not only just touched us at some point but but as we know from Thich Nhat Hanh they actually are us in this moment um so um you know, it's it's been very healing for me to incorporate this practice into my into my life because it it creates moments and feeling of belonging when I when I feel so disconnected based off of what's happening in the world and I feel so um, 
maybe discouraged at times, like bringing those beings in around me to, to not, um, to help me actually to be with what's true for me, right? Um, and it's, so it's, it's a practice of, of uh, a resilience in a, in a sense. Um, the more care and love that we feel, the more likely it is that we're going to move and be and act in the world, act and, and participate in the world in a way that reflects our feeling of belonging and love, right? So um, I always like to do this practice as much as I can um, because, you know, who we are today is never of our own willpower. And I think the blessing of the practice is that we awaken to the vastness of beings and the vastness of love that has been poured into our lives without our deserving that or working for it or maybe um, demanding it, right? That's the, the grace that has been with us for so long. And then there's the, the, the pain too, right? So it's not to ignore the, the, uh, the trauma, the, the pain and the, the sorrow and grief as well. However, it's been my experience that when I'm able to remember the, the love and feel that love, um, I'm more likely to, to carry that, that pain um, without it uh, over, overtaking me and without it controlling, controlling me. So just wanted to share that, that, that practice with you all. Um, hopefully um, it was nourishing to you. Yeah. Does anybody want to share anything about how this, this, this feeling of connection and maybe love or belonging that you may have felt might be supportive to you as you, you hold the complexity of what's going on with George Floyd or, or um, the complexity of our culture, our, our country, um, police violence, racial terror, all of this, how, how might this, how does this relate? Thanks for bringing in that uh, piece of noticing. Sometimes who shows up, it's like, go away, <laughs> right? It's like, no, not you. And it's, you know, and honestly, that's okay at times to say, no, not you. Um, and it's, it's, it all, it's also something like Stacy said that, you know, the awareness of the humanity of, of all, all people is, is something that is, is, um, is very nourishing and, and, and healing when we're able to, um, to equalize ourselves with others, right? To not separate ourselves from, um, from the quote unquote sins of others as if we have none. Right. So it's uh, and it's okay to notice the resistance too. Uh, it's okay to notice that resistance, and and it's no need to deny that resistance. But it's also what do we do with the resistance? Do we do we let it inform us, or do we try to control it or suppress it? So, yeah, so I want to invite us to do some more practice together. Okay. I told you all I didn't have a lot to say today, so I have some more practice for us to, to do a little bit. And then I, there's a song that's really been on my heart recently that I, has been really inspiring me. And I would love to, to share that song with you and 
um, to see how the, the message of this song speaks to you. Okay, so just inviting you to find a posture again for practice. And this, this is gonna be the, the rest practice that I've created and we can talk later. We, I have a five week course around this practice that happens every, every other month. Um, but yeah, so this practice was really kind of created out of my wish that, um, you know, we might have a way of becoming free of the chains of our socialization, capitalism, white supremacy, um, you know, the, that says that over striving and overworking is okay and should be accepted and is normal. So this practice is when we we shift out of those, those ideas and internalized beliefs that we often are socialized into. Um, and we learn to, to be with ourselves in a way that's completely free of any control or striving. Um, so I call rest is when we connect with that deep innocence and that, that way of being that it's effortless. Okay, so I'll invite three sounds of the bell. Okay, so just checking in with your posture as always not to conform to any idea of what posture should look like, but just asking your body, do I need to lie down? Is this posture okay? Or is there a, another modification that I need to make? And then for this practice, we immediately start from the space of not doing anything. So we, we relax. We allow our experience to be completely as it is without any form of manipulation on our part. So there's no, no need to focus on anything. No need to concentrate in any particular way. but letting our attention relieve itself of the burden of having to focus and make anything happen. So let your attention relax rather than focus. And when any sense of efforting or any impulses to, to focus or to, to make anything happen, if that arises, simply let that 
momentum completely run its course. So don't try to control it. Just let what's happening happen. Let what comes come. Just be empty of all intentions or agendas. Just being aware being completely empty of looking for a particular outcome. Simply allowing your attention to rest. Nothing to fix, nothing to change. Being aware. Effortlessly is enough. Not trying to cultivate awareness. Awareness is the natural expression of being. So just be. And allow whatever experiences are arising to be. Not control, but let them be. And as you remain in this just purely natural, just being ordinary, just sensing kind of the, the natural silence in the background of of all the thinking the sounds, the sensations. Just sensing the ever present silent awareness that's underneath of all that's happening and sensing how this is not disturbed by any thought, doesn't push away any sound, doesn't push away any emotion, doesn't force us to be still.
simply surrendering all impulses to, to change or fix anything. We let the silence hold whatever arises, no matter how disturbing or uncomfortable. Just sensing how the silence Awareness never is covered. Awareness doesn't become covered by thinking or emotions or sounds. Awareness simply is here. So we tune into this, this feeling of completion and presence that doesn't require effort or work. So we tune into being aware rather than tuning into focusing on the breath or focusing on the body or focusing on anything in particular. We let the effortless presence of awareness be what we relax with. Nothing to seek. No state of mind to achieve. Sensing the fullness of being. Simply being. So you can't do this practice wrong because the only instruction is to just be yourself. Not focus on yourself, not pay attention to yourself. Let all of that relax, let all of that stop simply just be
And when the urge to do something appears, we let that fully blossom. We don't, we don't touch it. We don't try to make the mind settle. Awareness doesn't need to be settled. Neither does it need support. We allow ourselves to experience the fulfillment found in not having to do anything or be anyone. And therefore, we are separate from no one in this place of rest and pure being, awareness itself. And I'll be inviting three sounds of the bell. And thank you for your practice. And let me turn on my light. Okay, so just opening the space for a few reflections. What did you awaken to connect with during that practice? What did you discover? What did you feel? Thank you for naming that, Jessica. Um, because this, this practice, uh, it definitely um, makes space for everything that has been um, moving us in subtle ways. Um, and it's important to be compassionate and gentle with ourselves when we encounter that type of discomfort, you know, or any type of discomfort like that. Um, it's important for us not to say, well, I need to stick this out, you know. Um, and there is something rich and beautiful about having moments where we feel or sense, begin to sense into who we are beyond doing. And at times that can be very scary because the feeling of not doing for many of us is the feeling of not being. And this is what the practice helps us to, to encounter, but it also helps us to, to awaken to a way of seeing ourselves that's not filtered through what I do and what I achieve. So we have to be compassionate and gentle with ourselves um, because sometimes what's best is in those moments is to 
to incorporate something that helps us to feel like we are here, to feel that we we are held, right? To your question, Sherry, yes. And so this is what really makes this practice unique from many other practices, is that it starts off by inviting us to let go of focusing. And for many of us, what we do all day is focus. The attention is going from this to that, to this to that, accomplishing things, um, you know, planning, um, and and all of these, all of those habit energies, um, I can see directly connected to capitalism in different ways, um, and and also in this. Uh, you know, white supremacist thought as well. Um, and so what this practice does is it, it, really, um, it really helps us to, to see that the doing and the focusing is secondary to being. But capitalism trains us that doing and working and producing is what is who we are. So when we're to, when we're invited to relax, we feel as though something is off. So relaxing the R of rest, relax the attention and release, is is inviting us back into relationship with um, simply noticing when our attention kind of rises up to focus on something and then simply saying it's not needed right now because attention is useful but most of the time during the day we don't need our attention to be using our attention and in those moments we can connect with presence in a way that's effortless. So when we say relax the attention, what I'm inviting us to do is to let all striving cease. And that in, that's included in practice, in meditation practice, because what we do is the striving that we do in the world which creates exhaustion, fatigue, ailments in the body, all, all types of um, biological, social, emotional challenges, all of those things that we encounter in the world when we go to practice, we just do the same thing except we call it spiritual practice, meditation, right? So with this practice, it's like, hey, you exist before the striving and the doing and the, and the seeking begins. So I don't know if that's helpful, Cheryl, I mean, Sherry, um, but to re relaxing the attention is, is like letting, letting um, a pebble drop into the ocean. Once it drops, once you let it, let it out of your hand, the pebble naturally settles. So relaxing the attention is not something you do it's what happens when you awaken to the fact that you don't have to focus right now, right? So relaxing the attention is not a new meditation technique. It's a recognition of what's here and available, what we're capable, how we're capable of being. But I have a five week course on it that's lots of fun. It's very interactive. We're in our second cohort now. So it's, this is gonna be 50 people. Um, and I'm thinking about doing a third cohort in July. Um, and it's usually, each cohort usually is about 20 to 25 people. So it's very intimate. Um, so we meet, we meet online and we have discussions on an online platform. So Sherry, I can go more into it in the course. And I have an article on mindful.org about the rest practice where I, I really elaborate on it. And I can put that in a chat if anybody's interested.
Anybody else want to just speak into the space what that practice was like for them? And for me, this practice is a practice of resistance, right? There's a resistance to all forms of, um, all forms of, or all forces or systems that that don't in, that don't allow us to to have agency over our bodies or minds, right? Um, so I see this this practice as a, a direct connection to to healing. It doesn't mean that you stop working or stop going to work, but it's a it's a way that we we show up to wh whatever we do. So can I close with a song to share a song? Or absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> can I can I just make a, a pitch before you share a song? Yeah. Um, I, I will just thank you so much for being here with us, Rashid, and sharing your practice, your rest practice. And I dropped all your links to all your articles, everything in the chat. Um, and I just have to say, you all, that um, what media, social media, mainstream media uh, project as young Black men is not the experience that we've had here tonight. And um, this is really sweet and it's important that we hold young black men up who are, um, yeah, who are living a good life and sharing and teaching goodness. And so we all have an opportunity to hold Rashid up by supporting his livelihood so that he can continue to offer these teachings uh, to those ancestors that are yet to be. So there's a link in the chat, the Common Ground Meditation Center. Uh, go to the Truth and Justice Vigil, um, enter Rashi's name. As usual, two thirds goes to the teacher and then Common Ground retains a third to uh, continue to operate the center, which is reopening soon. And with that, a tune from Rashi. This is a song that's really dear to me. Hope you enjoy. Hey, so may any good that has come from this practice, may anything beautiful, anything holy, anything lovely, anything kind or worthy, may it not only benefit us, but may it benefit those that we love, those that, that are near to us, those that are far. May it benefit all beings without exception, both seen and unseen. Ashe, amen, and thanks for having me.